Light Color Shadow with a quick explanation on how to blend a HDR with a long exposed image. On one hand we got the benefits of high dynamic range, that means we have more information in the shadows and highlights. On the other hand we have the appealing effects of a long exposed image, a silky effect of the water and blurred clouds on the sky. With the combination of these two techniques it's possible to create a technical and stylistic superb image. Fundamental for this enterprise is that all the shots were taken on a tripod with the same focal length and for the best results shortly one after another. It doesn't matter if you take at first the HDR shot or the long exposed photo, the main thing is that the position of the camera has not changed. So this is our HDR shot created out of three different exposures. This photo is already edited to my taste and as you can see it wasn't necessary to use the HDR technique here because there are no big contrasts due to the overcast sky. Nevertheless I really like the shot. So here is our long exposed image with the same scenery. The boat got blurry because of the long exposure time, but this is not relevant for us because we only want to get the smooth surface of the water of this shot. What we're gonna do first is to sync the develop settings from our HDR shot to the long exposure. After synchronization we check the brightness of both pictures, respectively the long exposure should have the same brightness like our HDR, because the water surface should fit to the rest of the image. So in this example I have the luck that I don't have to adjust the exposure afterwards. So both look almost identical. We can go on to the next step. We select both images and go to make a right click on one and go to edit in and select edit in Adobe Photoshop. What is absolutely important is the color space. When you import raw files from Lightroom to Photoshop, Lightroom is using the Pro Photo RGB color space and to make sure that this gamut is also used in Photoshop, you have to click here below on the settings in the camera raw converter. In my case, the Pro Photo RGB space is already the standard setting with a color depth of 16 bit per channel. If you would edit the raw file now in a sRGB color gamut you would lose color information. After checking this you can click on OK and we select our long exposure. So we select the image in the layer section and drag it to the HDR and put it on top. To align it exactly press the V key to select the move tool and align the picture. To avoid unnecessary work, the long exposed photo should always be on top. And why is that? I'm gonna show you now. We add a layer mask to the long exposure and keep the layer mask selected and pressing G for the bucket tool and we making sure that we have selected black as color and we fill it with black and as you can see the long exposure disappeared. Now we start to paint the long exposed part, the water, in our actual image. With the brush tool we press B to get it and select white as color. We have still selected the layer mask and now we paint in again the water with a big size brush setting. And for the edges and lines at the transition between water and the HDR we are taking a softer brush to get a smooth transition. Some parts can be a bit tricky so you should always check that it still looks natural. And if you painted too much in you can press the X key to switch back and forth to black and white color and mask the long exposure back in. There's always a slight alignment problem at the transition, no matter how precisely you worked when taking the photos. The filter is responsible for that. I used a screwable filter for the long exposure and that's why the edges are a bit displaced by let's say some pixels. But to be honest that's only visible when you switch between both images all the time. To make sure that we have worked properly we can click on the layer mask while holding down the ALT key and look for gaps. To get back a normal view you can click again on the layer mask by holding the ALT key. So after blending the water into the final picture it becomes much more pleasant to view. You got now a nice silk effect on the water surface and the reflections of the boat and landing stage are better visible, what creates a nice detail. 
Now you can save the image by pressing Ctrl and S and the image is then available in your Lightroom catalog. Tell me what you think about this. Is this already too much manipulation or a nice and easy tool to improve the impression of a photograph? If you are more a fan of reading, there's also a guide of this tutorial on my website thelightcolorshadow.com and a big gallery with a lot of more photos. For more you can take a look on my channel and check the other videos out. If you like this tutorial you can leave a thumb up and a subscription. Thank you very much for watching and we see us in one of my next videos. Until then good light for you and until next time. Bye bye.